You see that beauty right behind me? That is a new luxury SUV that looks better than a Bentley, offers as much luxury as a Mercedes Maybach, yet does it cost an arm and a leg like a Rolls Royce? I'm talking about the all-new 2021 Genesis GV80, and this week the company has sent me this vehicle to live with for a week. We're gonna test it a little bit more thoroughly. We're gonna use it on a daily basis, like most luxury buyers would. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna talk about why I believe the new GV80 is the new benchmark luxury SUV. So you guys are pretty familiar with how the GV80 looks nowadays. It's been on the market now for around six months. Genesis unveiled it over a year ago. But I wanna show you the exact specs of this one here because I believe this is probably the one that a lot of consumers are gonna end up purchasing, especially if you wanna get the fully decked out model. Now, earlier this year, Genesis sent me over a red or burgundy 2.5 turbo, which was the more of the advanced trim. This is the top of the line prestige version painted in Himalayan gray. It's also got the 3.5 liter twin turbo V6. You can basically distinguish this one as the fully decked out model from these gorgeous, gorgeous wheels. These are 22 inch five spoke, kind of a polished satin uh, nickel look to the wheels. They're riding on fat 265 with Michelin Primacy Touring tires. You can see the brakes are also uh, pretty nice size. They're twin caliper Genesis embroidered or uh, embroidered rotor, um, which definitely looks good. The presence that this vehicle has from the wheels alone just give it a stance that a lot of people really just end up doing a double take on. Uh, and it really is a super handsome vehicle. Now Himalayan gray is probably not my first color choice, but this is probably the classy color that a lot of people really like. You can see the front end is full of chrome. I mean, look at the way that grill sparkles in the sunlight. You know, pair it, of course, with those headlights, with the, the dual LED design, the dual line design. You have these quad point uh, four LEDs for the low and high beams, LED turn signals, LED daytime running lights. And then you have some functional grill, grill openings here. I like how Genesis is also making their radar sensor a little bit less noticeable. Their older system kind of put it right here in the front of the grill, which definitely uh, stood out in a bad way. Now it's a lot more clean. It's a lot more modern looking. And this thing just has its own presence to it. It's very original looking. And that's what I'm really impressed about with Genesis with their dual line design, that crest grill, those quad headlights. Size-wise, this vehicle is around 194.7 inches long. So it's a mid-size SUV, the same size as like a Lexus RX, a little bit longer. Uh, it works best as a two-row like this model here. You do get features like a panoramic sunroof that my particular tester has, lots of chrome trim. Although I do think that Genesis should consider offering a night, like a black package for those of you who prefer the blacked out look as opposed to the chrome. The rear has that same dual line design with full LED taillights. Even the exhaust tips kind of create that crest shape that you find in the grill. Genesis is spelled out very proudly at the back, uh, although I would like to see their winged emblem back here, uh, although it would probably make it look a little bit too cluttered. The cargo area is also very, very practical. You get around 35 cubic feet of space with the seats up. This model only comes with two rows, full down the second row, uh, and you get around 84 cubic feet of space, so very, very good amount of space. Underneath here, you also find some storage, which is nice. You can put your uh, cargo cover down there. Uh, and you'll find a temporary spare tire underneath the actual cargo floor or underneath the bumper. But overall, very, very practical vehicle that's just the right size for a lot of people. So I know making a bold claim like that isn't easy, especially for a newcomer luxury brand like Genesis. However, as most of you guys know, the GV80 is in hot demand. I know so many people who want this SUV. The problem is, is the Genesis dealers aren't really up to snuff to actually deliver the car in the numbers that it deserves to be delivered in. I mean, I had so many people that said, I want this car, but the Hyundai dealer that has the Genesis dealer doesn't have the car in stock they can't get the car and people are paying sticker and more for this thing which is very well received because just like you know the hyundai and kia you know twins the palisade and the telluride which continue to command sticker or more the genesis version isn't based on the same vehicle but it has that same swagger that same prestige that same elegant look i mean this car this car the amount of necks that i broke just for having it for a week. Remember, I drove this car last, this version, um, when I was in California visiting my friend Alex Dykes from Alex on Autos. You know, I had the car just for a short time. Now Genesis has sent me in for a week. I can finally do my full battery of testing with it. 
And the first test thing that I want to do besides just living with it is I want to do an official zero to 60 because I've seen a couple of numbers. Motor Trend got six seconds for this engine while Car and Driver got 5.3 seconds. So we're going to try a run and we're going to see what this car can do on our roads uh, with my own testing equipment. So that is very impressive on our first run, zero to 60 in 5.69 seconds, which is right in the middle between what Motor Trend got and what Car and Driver got. And that feels about right. Five, the mid five second range is where I expected this car to be, considering we've got a 375 horsepower, 3.5 liter twin turbo V6. Uh, the engine itself, I wish it made around 400 horsepower, uh, but you know, with the amount of torque that it delivers, how it delivers that torque so low in the RPM rev range, and it's still rated to get 18 in the city, 23 on the highway. Fuel economy is definitely not as good as its competitors, uh, but you know it's still very class competitive. Genesis has always been slightly behind the fuel economy. This vehicle weighs a little over 5,000 pounds. It'll tow a maximum of 6,000 pounds. Uh, this eight-speed automatic is a Genesis design transmission, so it is, of course, a very good powertrain, and it's about what you expect in the luxury space. You want a powertrain like this in the luxury space uh, because this is what people demand. Now, the GV80 definitely drives and feels like a European car. Remember, the designer of this vehicle, uh, Luke, came from Bentley. Um, its chassis dynamics were tuned by Albert Bierman, of course. He's the head of uh, Hyundai R&D. Uh, and it feels like a big, heavy German car. And that's the funny thing is because some of the German cars don't even feel as expensive and solid as this vehicle does. I mean, the steering is somewhere between numb and responsive. It's kind of right in the middle. Uh, the suspension, this particular one here has the 22 inch wheels, my favorite wheels ever on the GV80. Uh, and the vehicle actually surprisingly has a very playful feel to it, even though its heft is a lot. Um, but you can kind of go around corners and just enjoy the control that you get. It's got a nice sweet sounding V6 that offers plenty of torque and the transmission is so responsive. I mean, yes, it's down a couple of gears compared to something like the Lincoln Aviator, which, or the Acura MDX, which has 10 speeds. But I would argue that the 10 speeds may be too many. This eight speed offers a really, really nice amount of gears. Uh, and it should be plenty of performance for most people. And every time I just stab the throttle, you can feel surge of torque, quick shift. And I apologize for the wind noise. I've got the window slightly cracked because of my uh, zero to 60 testing equipment. We'll take that out and we'll close the window. We'll talk about the quietness of this cabin in just a moment. And there's run two with uh, no downhill slope whatsoever, really. This is pretty as flat as it's gonna get, 5.78 seconds. So that number, I'm pretty impressed with that number. It's about what I expect, a little bit slower than competitors like the BMW X5, but about on par with uh, a Lincoln Aviator, uh, quicker than an Acura MDX, I wanna say, uh, and around the same as a Mercedes-Benz GLE 450. Now, the one thing I do wanna address is the ride quality, quality in the GV80 because some of you have read or have heard, I've seen, um, some reviewers have complained that this vehicle has a rough ride quality. Now, I'm driving the model with the 22 inch wheels, <clears throat> the massive 265 width tires. This is the model that supposedly will have the roughest ride quality simply because it doesn't have an air suspension. Genesis doesn't put an air suspension on this vehicle, which is a interesting omission on their part. I suspect they did it because they wanted to uh, reduce the cost, reduce the complexity, and the steel suspension in this vehicle, it has multi-links at all four corners. It's independent. Uh, definitely, I think, rides just fine. Over smooth pavement like this, I think the ride is on the firmer side of comfort. I do notice over bumps that you feel the crashes a little bit more than I would expect in a vehicle you know, with this luxury caliber, but for me, it's not a deal breaker. For some, it might be. So my recommendation, if you guys are uh, more sensitive to a harsher ride, probably look at the one with the 20 inch wheels. The smaller wheels and tires will help with the overall ride quality. But other than that, I find the, the quiet to be so, or the cabin to be so quiet in here. It's so eerily quiet. Um, very comparable to the last, you know, Mercedes-Benz E-Class that I drove. 
in terms of quietness. Um, the visibility in here is amazing. You can see out of it extremely well. Uh, you've got this nice boxy upright shape. Uh, good view out of the front side, mirrors are large. The Genesis driver assistance suite is standard. You've got the highway driving assist, you've got the lane keep assist, you've got the traffic jam assist. It all is there to make just driving this vehicle so much more enjoyable. Um, yet when the corners show up, it can handle its, it can handle it relatively well <laughs> with lots of power to spare. Now, could Genesis do an even more powerful version? They don't offer a V8, for example. They don't offer something above this twin turbo V6. I don't think Genesis will do that, but we know that Genesis is working on ele electrification and that's kind of where the industry is going. There is no hybridized or plug-in hybrid version of this yet, but we know that that is coming uh, whenever Genesis decides to unveil it. Hyundai and Kia have been really strong at uh, giving us those full electric options, and I suspect the GV80 and Genesis in general will follow suit with that. Now, in terms of luxury and this interior, let's briefly talk about this interior because we've got this massive 14 and a half inch tablet style screen. It is a touch screen, although you probably aren't going to want to touch this while you're driving. You can touch it while you're driving, but as you can see, it's a very, very far reach. Um, so you can also use this wheel controller, which I think works okay. I would have preferred it also has a, works like a touchpad as well, so you can kind of use the middle and just use it as a touchpad like a lot of Lexus and Mercedes and Acura products, although it doesn't do the one-to-one -one positioning, it works like a mouse pad. Um, I think that the touchpad itself looks pretty. I love the crystal-like glass controls that you get. I love the knurled metal trim that you also get. And the touch screen is kind of, or the screen is right in your line of sight. It makes for checking glances or glancing over things really easy, which I like. I also love the 3D virtual gauge display, although this is the only trim to get it. You have to go for the V6 Prestige to get the 3D virtual display, which you can change the way this looks by pushing a couple buttons on the wheel. Uh, it shows you your driven drive information, your tire pressure information, all the usual trip computer stuff or your driver assistance stuff, uh, which looks good. The 3D effect is really, really cool. It also has the driver you know, monitoring system where it, if it, it knows when I'm not looking at the road and it'll tell you to be a little bit more attentive. The massaging driver's seat uh, on this model is also relatively nice, although Genesis does save some money here by only giving you a massaging seat on the driver's seat. The passenger front, the front passenger is gypped. Uh, you don't get that. You also don't get the bolsters that kind of squeeze and hug you like you get with this model. In terms of space, the front seat is also very comfortable. I think the quilted leather that you got on this model. They're heated and cooled. Um, the seats could be a little bit softer for my taste, but the leather feels expensive. It feels high quality. You kind of have to get used to the lumpiness of these diamond quilts that you get, you get that are actually real. They're not just kind of like stitched on there. These are actual indentations in the leather. The rear seat is also a big, nice place to spend time. Although Genesis doesn't offer any captain's chairs, you can get a third row in this vehicle, which is kind of reserved for kids. Uh, if you're looking for a true three row, seven seater luxury SUV, you need to look at something like the Mercedes Benz GLS, uh, the BMW X7. Uh, those offer more rear seat, third row leg room. Genesis is supposedly working on a GV90, which is above this vehicle. I'm really excited to drive the GV70 that'll be coming out later this summer, the smaller version of this car. But Really, if you guys are looking at a two-row Lexus RX or an Acura MDX or a Mercedes-Benz GLE, an Audi Q7, a BMW X5, and you don't look at this, you're really missing out on what this brand has to offer. It offers a new original take on luxury. It offers amazing looks that people just break their necks constantly to stare at this thing. Plenty of value for money. It's amazing to me how you know this car at $72,000 feels like I'm driving a car that's twice the price from the expensive materials in here to the really plush ride, uh, quiet cabin, smooth, effortless power from the V6. I mean, I'm just at a shock for words. This car just came out last December, yet it's still a really hot car in the market. And I'm just super excited to drive this vehicle every time I get a chance behind the wheel. And I'm excited for Genesis to really start to ramp out production of this vehicle whenever the uh, chip shortage is fixed and uh, we start seeing more and more of these on the road because it is still very much a rare sight, at least in my local area. 
Now in terms of fuel economy, I do want to mention in my long-term testing, I averaged around 16 mpg in mixed driving. On the highway, the best I could do was around 21 miles to the gallon. So below the EPA numbers, uh, which disappoints me a little bit, Genesis definitely needs to work on improving the fuel economy. That's really the only weak point that I see with this vehicle. Other than that, I struggle to find things that are wrong with it, other than the fact that you can't get it and the gas mileage is not as good as it could be. So after spending a week with the all new 2021 Genesis GV80, I wanna talk about my favorite feature because I forgot to mention it. It's probably this, the remote park assist. And as you can see, as long as I hold this button here, the car will move forward and back in and out of a parking spot, just like a Tesla, just like a BMW. It's definitely just a gimmick for now, but what's wrong with a gimmick? Because this is a really cool party trick that gets a lot of people talking because this is one seriously impressive luxury SUV. Now, this vehicle here has a total MSRP of around $72,000. 72 grand for a fully loaded version is definitely not cheap. This is about $10,000 more expensive than an Acura MDX, than a Lexus RX. Still cheaper though than an Audi Q7, a BMW X5, and a Mercedes-Benz GLE class especially when you consider the equipment that this car comes with. If you guys go for a base engine, they start at under $50,000, $10,000 more if you guys want the twin turbo six. Highly recommend the six. The four is fine, but I, for me, if I was gonna go all in on this luxury vehicle, I'd go for the twin turbo V6. It just moves the vehicle out with enough speed. You guys saw zero to 16 around 5.6, 5.7 seconds. Now, flaws with the car are few and far between. If you guys favor a softer ride, don't go for these 21 inch or 22 inch wheels. If you guys want a little bit more complete luxury and tech like night vision, like adaptive air suspension, you're gonna wanna go for its German competitors, but again, be prepared to pay extra for those vehicles. And really the biggest problem with the GV80 is just trying to get your hands on one of these. Dealers aren't keeping them in stock. Hyundai dealers are still connected to Genesis dealers, which I'm hoping Genesis will eventually start their own standalone stores and really, other than that, with the smaller GV70 coming out, rumors of a bigger flagship GV90, this is one hot new SUV, and it without a doubt is the new benchmark luxury SUV. There's a lot of new competitors out there. There's a lot of great competition that's already out there. And this one for me is definitely my favorite. So if you guys have roughly 50 to $70,000 to spend and you're not looking at this one, you're doing yourself a huge disservice. But with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the 2021 Genesis GV80 with the three and a half liter twin turbo V6. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook. And as always guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.